I've lived along the Indian River Lagoon for over 20 years, and I love being able to get out on the water and be a part of nature. There are lots of folks that live along these waters that care about its wildlife and will go to great lengths to rescue an injured seabird, dolphin, manatee, or turtle. But if that rescued animal is returned to polluted waters, what real hope does it have? I think the most important thing I can do to help these magnificent creatures is to make their water cleaner. Throughout my career as a deep sea biologist, I have sought ways to peer into the depths with new technological eyes that have led to some remarkable discoveries of new species and new animal behaviors. Now I'm seeking new ways to make the invisible visible. In this case, invisible pollutants like the fertilizers, pesticides, heavy metals, and petroleum-based products that are carried off our lawns and streets into our coastal waters with every rainstorm. This is the mission of the organization that I helped found in 2005, the Ocean Research and Conservation Association. At ORCA, scientists and engineers are working together to develop 21st century solutions to ocean conservation challenges. One method we have developed for making pollution visible is called FAST for Fast Assessment of Sediment Toxicity. Sediment is the material under the moving water. Because many pollutants accumulate in the sediment, the best indicator of local water pollution problems often lies not in the water itself, but in the sediment beneath it. First, we collect sediment samples throughout our study area. Then we take the sample to the lab and see how the sediment affects the light output of bioluminescent bacteria. Sediments with no toxicity do not affect the bacteria, so they strongly emit light. Toxic sediments inhibit bioluminescence, so these samples emit little or no light. Using this information, we can map our study area to show where sediment is more or less polluted. Those spots shown to be highly toxic are then analyzed to determine the specific compounds responsible. Once we know where the pollution is ending up, we can begin to track where it came from. This is where Kilroy comes in. Kilroy is the sensor system we developed that tells you which direction the water is flowing and how fast. It communicates this information continuously through a wireless signal just like your cell phone. When we overlay the water flow information onto the sediment toxicity map, we can generate a pollution gradient map that describes the shape of polluted sediments and likely pollution sources. We can also give instructions to Kilroy to collect water samples when we see rainfall or changes in the amount of sediment in the water. By relating the toxins in that sample to the flow patterns at the time it was taken, we can definitively track pollutants to their source. Once we have established where pollution is coming from, we can take measures to stop it and, using FAST and Kilroy, we can measure which pollution reduction methods really work and which ones are a waste of time and money. It may seem dramatic to say that working in our little area of coastline can be important to the entire ocean, but once you realize three major points, you can see how the work we are doing at ORCA has importance worldwide. The first is that there is really only one ocean. All the world's oceans and seas are connected by currents, which act like huge rivers transporting water all around the globe. The second is that we depend upon the ocean for survival. The ocean is part of the complex life support system that sustains all life on Earth. Protecting the ocean is about protecting ourselves. The third is that we are changing this very important system with the pollutants we are putting in it. And the vast majority of pollutants are entering our oceans along coastlines like our study spots along the Indian River Lagoon. By studying ways that we can better measure and mitigate water pollution, we can apply what we learn to coastal waters around the world. It's important to understand that an ecosystem like the Indian River Lagoon is like a light switch. With each addition of pollutants, we put a little more pressure on the switch. At first, we don't see much change until we pass the tipping point, and then the entire ecosystem shifts to an unhealthy but relatively stable state. It's hard to flip that light switch back. This ecosystem is home to me and thousands of other organisms. I hope that through our efforts, the light of the Indian River Lagoon will never go out.